Sometimes you win some. Sometimes you lose some. Unattended fire. Special thanks to Artie and Howie. This week we've opted to buy a bag of coffee rather than just a cup with a buy me a coffee link. Thank you for clicking that. We have opted for chocolate raspberry. Whoa, pretty excited whoa, whoa. about it. There's no we. I've opted for chocolate raspberry and I am pretty excited about it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Today my goal is to complete the step install that I started last week. What I didn't have last week was this steel to make an adapter plate because the two steps require a different hole mounting pattern. When I started to mount the trailer steps last week, I decided that I didn't want to drill additional holes up in the trailer frame because it might further weaken it. And so I'm going to use these adapter plates and I believe that I'm going to maintain the structure and I should be able to finish this project today. So why do you have it crisscrossed like that and clamped down? Oh, I'm cutting this one to 26 and I'm using this one as a guide to make a nice straight cut. Nice. I'm now drilling the steel plate I used a hole punch to start so I could make sure my hole was centered where I wanted it. And then I'm just gonna drill through with a little bit of oil. All right, I have the steps removed. If you've seen last week's video, you, you know it's just the four bolts here that hold the steps up to the floor of the Airstream. So these are the two bolt heads from the existing step and then these are the two new holes I've got nearly ready for the new step to bolt up and one of the issues we're having is that we hope to paint today but there it is raining. This step is not electrical in the sense that it works mechanically it's not motorized but it does have some wires back here and what those are for is uh, it has a built-in switch that will tell you if it's down uh, if you wire it up, essentially a safety switch to give you a dash light to warn you that the step is down. We're not going to wire that up right now, but the potential is there. I like it. It um, kind of has a really positive lock into place back up and all the way out, but it's not a lot of spring tension to actually move it. So I like it. I think I like it. It um, gives us Rather than kind of two half steps, it gives us one full step in. My scope of work has completely changed. I went from being a camp host and collecting fees, and now I am, because of the broken leg, I've been redirected and I'm doing back end paperwork. So the secret is out that I have computer skills, and I do hope that I'll get out into the forest and hiking and in the woods again. But for now, it's comforting to have something to pass the time, and a way to maintain my income. Unattended fire. Ugh. Take another one. Okay. I'm doing campground shutdowns because I can do that in my boot and I can do that in the truck. This is McCubbin's Gulch and it's an OHV area. So if you're down with um, dirt bikes and you like to go four wheeling, this is the place to come. It's pretty spectacular. There's trail riding everywhere, just everywhere. So, if that's your jam, McCubbin's Gulch on Mount Hood, it's amazing. One of the things I have to do to close down the campground bathrooms, this vault bathroom door needs to be locked when we leave, and I couldn't get the lock to work, so I need to do a little bit of maintenance to free up this lock. It's a silicone or graphite? I'm using silicone because it's what I have. Um, maybe graphite would be better, but I'm gonna run it back and forth with the silicone. Hopefully that frees everything up. Hopefully I can put it in the right place and it won't catch on the plate as it goes out. I think we're good. And we're locked. Pretty sure that one has a GPS tracker on it. You want to say what happened? 
Uh, someone stole this, the box for this earlier in the season, and it's made a miraculous return with someone else's lock on it. <laughs> Long game. Because we'd already done the shutdowns for this, so they would have been able to collect envelopes the whole winter long. We are doing the shutdown for Joe Graham, right? It's Joe Graham? Joe Graham Horse Camp. Horse Camp, and they have horse corrals here. I kind of wish I had been able to come when there were horses, but it's pretty cool. They have sites with picnic tables and fire rings and these horse corrals and a barn. I had never seen anything like it. And the trees are huge. Trees are very huge. So this guy was walking around my Airstream, which is near a mile and a half from here, earlier today. I'm not sure what he's up to. Trash guy thought it was, I guess, ending, but we have another week of dump, so we have to flip them all back up. He flipped them over. We're boondocking near Trillium Lake, and we are full and we need fresh water. So we're gonna pull off today and go exploring at some of the other campgrounds that our company runs. we're towing into Clear Creek Campground where the max vehicle size is 16 feet clearly we're over that but we're just visiting the day use fee is five dollars a day per vehicle and camping overnight for a single night is sixteen dollars and eight dollars per night for an extra vehicle There are a total of seven campsites in here. If you want a waterfront site, I would suggest you get here early on a Thursday or Friday before the weekend. This tranquil hidden gem boasts one vault toilet, some picnic tables, a few fire rings, and no drinkable water. There is a trail near the campground that crosses through a Camas Prairie, a once common ecological zone where indigenous people once went to harvest the edible Camas roots. Huh. Learn something new every day. Well, sometimes you win some. Sometimes you lose some. How's it going? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I'm uh, nearly done picking up the popcorn and beans. A little bit of flour. I'm sad rice. about the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, popcorn's about the saddest thing in that in that mix. Oh, well, no, because you also got the jasmine rice. Oh, that would have been the new rice, too. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> oh, well. It happens. That's life on the road for you. Yeah, we wanted some rough roads. We did. Like, really rough. Yeah. So we just had a um, chance to give a group of through hikers ride actually it was half the group there were six of them we gave three of them that's all we could fit that's all we could fit so we gave three of them a ride to government camp hopefully they can um the rest of them will get picked up by somebody but this is a little it's, bit of a flashback it's to it's funny because we told them who we were and they're like oh we know about you yeah they were reading about us on the app they knew about shauna's broken leg somebody had mentioned that we had moved off site because of shauna's broken leg so it was fun that you know and they <laughs> gave us well wishes on that uh but it's fun that fun to find out that they knew so that was pretty cool want to know where we're going we're towing to signal so that we can make some phone calls because the first workers comp um company has denied my claim and i need cell phone signal to make calls we got to make progress on this today i absolutely have decided to tow to a parking lot 
um, and knock out some of these phone calls. And I want to do it comfortably. Comfortably. Yeah. So um, with all my things, and it, I can take as long as I want, and I don't have to yep. rush or be worried. Yeah, we got the food, we got the comfort, so we're going to do that. We can just bring the house. Hopefully that'll make this a little easier because it's going to be frustrating, I'm sure. I don't have to take my boot into a public restroom. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of things um, that this eliminates for me, even though it was inconvenient because we had all of our stuff spread all over the place. Yeah. So it was inconvenient to have to, like, hook up when we realized that the, um, the claims had been denied. So. Yeah. More on that, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, hopefully there's good news on that shortly.